Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, so I'm back for my second video for the year, uh, which is actually two more than what I did last year. So already we're off to a good start. Um, but before I jump into today's video, I did want to just say a quick thank you to everybody that checked out my collection room tour. Uh, and for those of you who subscribed, even though I only had the one video up so far, really appreciate the support and uh, I promise I'll be doing more contents this year. So please uh, stay tuned. Uh, but for today's video, uh, I wanted to share with you guys some details about the display setup. Uh, so I have had a few questions about, you know, the shelves that I use, the lighting and all those type of things. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing with you guys uh, some details on those today. Now, I'm going to be splitting up the video into two parts, um, just so it's not too long. Uh, we're going to do the first video uh, purely on the shelves and, and some of the mods or you know minor additions that I've made to them. And then part two, uh, we'll look at the, the lighting. Um, so with that said, we'll jump straight into it, uh, starting with the shelves that I use. Uh, so these are the IKEA uh, Brawl shelves. Uh, so basically they're IKEA's version of the garage or rack shelving. Uh, so they're made out of uh, galvanized steel. And they, they do come in a couple of different sizes. Um, the ones that I have here, they're the 190 centimeters tall, uh, 85 centimeters wide, and 55 centimeters deep. Uh, so in inches, I think that's roughly about 74 uh, inches tall, uh, 33 inches wide, and about 21 centimeters deep. I'm oh, sorry, 21 inches deep. So um, they're not the widest uh, or the deepest compared to other uh, garage shelves. Uh, but they definitely work for, for my collection. Uh, so just something that you'll need to consider, obviously, depending on you know what you want to display on them. Um, but yeah, so now these shelves, um, they come in two colors. So they come in either black, uh, or you'll see on this side, uh, the white versions. Um, but what you'll also notice in my uh, display is I've got a combination of sort of the black um, frames with the white uh, shelves. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to buy it uh, in this way. So you're not going to have this color scheme available when you purchase this uh, from Ikea. And I'll explain why. Um, so basically, when you buy these shelves, uh, they come in two components. Uh, so they come with uh, the post uh, that I think it comes in a pack of four. Uh, and then you buy the shelves uh, separately. So depending on how many shelves you need, you have to buy them individually. Um, but unfortunately, when you do buy the shelves, uh, they will come as a pack where it includes the panel as well as the frames uh, that then attaches to the post uh, that supports the panel. So when you buy, let's say, the white uh, shelves, it will come with the white frames as well that attaches to the uh, post. Uh, and vice versa, if you buy the black um, versions, uh, then they will come with the black um, uh, frames as well as the uh, black panel. So uh, unfortunately, that's the only way that they sell them. Uh, so how I basically got around that and how I set up the display with mine is when I first started um, uh, collecting quarter scale statues and I bought the uh, broad shelves, I had the all white version of the shelves. Uh, so I had a, a few of those already. And then as I expanded my collection, I um, decided that I wanted to go with a you know, black and white combination. And so I picked up the black version of the shelves. And then once I've got those, uh, basically all I did was I swapped the panels uh, between the black and the white versions. Uh, and that's how I ended up with the uh, black frames, the white panel. And then if I go on to this other side of the room, you'll see that I have the white frames, but with the black panels. So that's basically how I got um, around to uh, setting it up in this way. Now you do have the option, of course, of just painting uh, the shelves or, or the, the frames themselves, if you like. Um, and I did that for one of the smaller boards that I have in the other room, but it does take a lot of work, also chews up a lot of paint. So if you don't want to do that, this is the option that you can um, go with. Uh, but again, that depends on your setup uh, and whether that will work for you in terms of how many um, shelves you need. Uh, and also if you're happy to have, you know, sort of a, a different setup on, on each side. So for me, this worked out really well because I wanted to have a different look to where I have all of my X-Men um, pieces displayed. So this is the X-Men collection. 
uh, where you know we've got the white shelves there and then of course on this side I have sort of the rest of the Marvel uh, comic characters um, in, in the black um, display so uh, again something that you'll need to consider for your own collection but for me this worked out really really well so that's the shelves now the next thing I want to talk about are the back panels that I have installed on each of the uh, shelves uh, so this is a really, really basic and inexpensive uh, option and you don't have to do this. The only reason why I did is I just prefer a much cleaner look uh, with the back panel uh, on there, especially because on the back of the shelves there's actually a cross beam that runs um, across the back. Uh, I guess it's an additional support um, for the shelves to make it a little bit more stable. Uh, so I just didn't like the look of that and I really wanted to tidy it up. And so I decided to install some back panels on it. Now these are basically just um, three millimeters um, melamine boards uh, that I picked up from a local uh, hardware store. Uh, and I, I just got it cut to size, depending on obviously the size of the shelves that you've got. Um, and then on the back of each board, I just attached uh, some magnetic strips uh, on the back and then that then just um, magnetizes to the uh, metal frames of, of the shelves. So, really really quick uh, and an inexpensive way to do that uh, and it you know creates a much cleaner look uh, for the display in my opinion so not something that you have to do but I highly recommend it because it will uh, make the, the display look a lot cleaner so that's it uh, so you can see I've got panel at the top uh, and then a separate panel on the bottom because uh, obviously you're not going to be able to do the one you probably could just do a one size and then attach it to the back of the um, the, the frames. Uh, the only thing is, of course, then you'll have this part here showing in front of the board. And if that doesn't bother you, that's fair enough. Then you can get away with just doing one piece of board that, that goes on the back. Or even if you've got a setup like this where you've got multiple, do a really big cut uh, and then just attach it to the back of the whole thing, you know, up to you. So that is the back panel. Um, now the next thing that I want to talk about is or actually on this side of the, the display. So as you can see on this side, I actually have the bottom shelf raised up one uh, because the pieces that I have on this side, they're not as tall. And so I didn't need all that extra space above them, uh, which would just be wasted. And so I decided to raise the bottom shelf up. Uh, but what it does do is obviously it leaves uh, a gap on the bottom. Uh, of the, the last shelf and then the floor uh, and again you can leave it that way it's not a problem um, but I, I just really wanted to again uh, give it a cleaner look uh, so I decided to put a, a panel uh, to cover that bottom part um, and this again is a really really cheap and inexpensive way of doing it so I'll come in a little bit closer so these are just core flute boards um, now I've never actually heard of that until uh, recently but basically they are this um, soft or hard plastic but they're very durable uh, and I think they use them for like signage um, to write on and things like that uh, so they're really really cheap to buy uh, and then they're so easy to work with so all you need is a sharp Stanley knife and you can basically cut them to size yourself um, but yeah so that's that's all that is um, and then again on the back I've just put the magnetic strip to um, you know stick it onto the actual metal frames and what it does is actually a really easy way of just removing that so you can just peel that off there you go and then you've got that extra space down the bottom now what i also show you is on one of these things in here is i actually just picked up a couple of these containers and these are from ikea and what that allows me to do is basically oh my camera's going a bit crazy is put all of my switch out parts inside that container so away from view maximize the space uh, and they could stay in there nice and clean and i don't have to find you know a separate space uh, to store them so again you know great option if you want to um, kind of maximize the space that you have uh, and again it's really really um, cheap option and super easy to do um, so yeah so that's the other mod that I've done uh, on this uh, cabinet or this shelf, you can see it just makes it look, look a lot nicer and, and cleaner. Now, the last thing that I will talk about is 
this display here with the X-Men collection. So uh, I still have two of the same size um, shelves that I had on the other side. Uh, so these are the Brawl, uh, the 190 centimeters tall, 85 centimeters uh, wide, 55 centimeters deep uh, shelves. But you can see that the top part of it, it's uh, open, so it doesn't have the posts that run through the middle. Now I can't take credit for this one because I actually uh, saw another collector do this for his display and I thought it was a brilliant idea. So shout out to him for um, for sharing uh, the secrets. Uh, but it's basically really, really simple. Uh, so you get two of the uh, broad shelves uh, again. And as I mentioned earlier, you buy the post uh, separately as, as a, you know its own component. Uh, now, all you need to do is basically pick up some of the shorter post which is the 110 centimeters one that's the one that's in the middle there uh, and basically that's all you need uh, so you replace what would normally be the same uh, post as the ones on the side here and on the back uh, that goes here in the middle you just replace it with those shorter versions uh, and then you end up with an open um, top panel like that or open top shelf uh, which is great because it means that you can display more because uh, you've got that whole space and I just think it creates a very different look as well, which is really nice. Uh, the only thing to um, be mindful of is obviously when you do that, you're not going to have the post up here to uh, key in this um, uh, this frame uh, that you would normally like this. Uh, so you will end up with a little hole where that normally slides into the post. Uh, so you just have to find a way to cover that up. So all I did was I uh, got a couple of the L brackets, put it on the inside, and then actually screwed them together on the inside like that, all right? Um, and that just holds it in place. And that's not gonna fall anywhere because it is still supported obviously on each corner and it's still got this metal beam that holds it in place. So it's not gonna fall or anything, but you're definitely not gonna be able to put anything on top of that shelf with any substantial weight because uh, it's not gonna support. Uh, which is fine for me because I don't intend on displaying anything up there anyway. It's a little bit too high. There's no light, so uh, that doesn't bother me at all. Um, so yeah, so that's basically it. As you can see, I've done that on the other side as well. So here, essentially, I have four uh, of the IKEA uh, bra shelves uh, next to each other. And yeah, I've just replaced that middle section uh, with a shorter post. Uh, to create those two big um, sort of opening for that top shelf to um, yeah be able to fit more pieces in and it just looks really nice especially when you've got a you know a big ensemble of characters that you want to display together so that is pretty much it for the display shelves um, so not a great deal of you know mods just really basic ones and, and really inexpensive ones as well uh, but you can achieve a really nice and clean look I have had a couple of people ask me if this were Moji cases and <laughs> obviously not. And this is, you know, a fraction of the price that you would pay to get something like a Moji case, which are amazing um, display uh, options, of course. Um, but, you know, it does obviously chew up uh, a lot of funds. And, and also I, I heard they're a bit of a pain to put together. Um, now, you can even go the extra mile if you wanted to and, and put some uh, cover in the front here to get rid of those holes. So... That's something that I may consider in the future, just again, to make it even more uh, of a cleaner look. But other than that, they, they don't really bother me. I think they still look great. Um, the only thing that you would need to consider for your own um, collection is if you want to have uh, an acrylic um, installed uh, on the front or the sides, you can definitely do that. But obviously, uh, again, being not the deepest of all you know, garage shelvings, uh, you may have or you may find that some of your pieces will stick out like I have here So you're not going to be able to do that again Not something that bothers me because I don't like to display things behind uh, you know glass or, or acrylic anyway So uh, that doesn't bother me and you know, this works out really well for me All right, and um, so that's basically it guys if you do have any questions uh, Please, you know leave a comment below and I'll try and get back to you and answer it uh, your questions. I will also link uh, all of the uh, items that I mentioned in the description below so you can check them out and you may have to find something similar um, depending on where you are because a lot of these are picked up uh, locally. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave the descriptions below and 
if you guys have any questions please shoot me a, a comment um, but yeah that's it we'll leave it there for this video and then we'll come back for the the lighting in the next video um, and then yeah I'll, I'll share with you guys how I set that up so thanks again for um, for tuning in and I'll catch you on the, the next video thanks guys cheers